This is the video for Friday, July the 10th, and our McClellan oscillator ticked up a little bit. Um, advancers and decliners were really uh, skewed towards the advancers. You can see that um, advancers were 2300, decliners 700, and the volume was skewed in the same way. So we're approaching zero, but we're still negative. The stacked volume showed that it was another low volume day. Uh, if we look at volume and the importance of volume, when the market was starting to drop for COVID-19, you had this huge amount of volume and most of it was selling. When the market started to recover uh, a little bit in early March, we had big volume again and it was buying and we had more of it in here. And then we had a long period where the market really just went flat and volume went nowhere. Here we've got the, vault, the market moving up on no volume, which is really suspicious. So this is what Friday looked like. It was the highest um, buying day of the week, and it was the lowest selling day of the week, and that's for Friday to end the week, so that's interesting. The summation index, of course, continues to tick a little bit down because the oscillator is still negative. But now let's look at the charts because there are some telling things in there. We look at the Dow Jones, we still see uh, basically stuck in between these two gaps and consolidating and moving side, which is what, which is what we thought. But we see the, um, the NASDAQ 100, just the NASDAQ 100, it's not the full NASDAQ. And we had originally uh, looked at this wave, which started in 2009 after the, uh, the big recession and then peaked in 2018, did a double top and then a pullback. So we looked at that wave and we see that we've exceeded 138.2%. But if we draw a new Fibonacci on just the COVID drop, you can see that we stopped uh, at the end of last week exactly at 138.2%. Let's just move that out a little bit so that you can see. I mean, exactly. 138.2% and pulled back. Now we start earnings this week with the big banks um, and a couple of industrials. And then the following week we really get into earnings. And this is predicted to be one of the worst earnings quarters since the recession. So keep that in mind when you see the um, NASDAQ hitting an important Fibonacci level and stopping dead in its tracks. The volatility index is still in this churning area. Apple um, finished uh, at the top of its range for the day, did not make a new high, still a very strong stock. Caterpillar, this uh, Gartley pattern is looking weaker and weaker all the time. I just, you know, I see this 78.6%, 129.37 as being a major resistance point for Caterpillar going forward and since I'm short the 130 calls uh, that's just great for me. Uh, FDX finally finished above 13 uh, but it's still not ready to buy. We need to have a breakout over this and then a little bit of a test to come back and then um, that would be the time to buy. So I'm keeping my eye on FDX but you know buying anything right now at the beginning of earn earnings season maybe not such a good idea. Home Depot continues in this uh, pennant pattern uh, and could break out, frankly, either way. It's not the most bullish uh, looking of pennants. Um, so let's see what happens with that. Again, I am short the 245s and the 250s that expire on Friday of this week. So being at 250, staying between 245 and 250 would be fine for me. I would just roll. Um, either a week or two weeks to more 245s and 250s. Uh, Home Depot should have good earnings despite the coronavirus thing. I know that shopping at Lowe's, I noticed during the coronavirus uh, that people were certainly doing home projects and shopping at Lowe's. Amazon continues to just go bananas, crazy. Um, I, I mean, it just leads one to think that maybe we really are overbought. So I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty quickly now. What else do we want to look at? Let's look at the banks and where the banks finished for the week. 
So we see the Bank of America stalling at 38.2, Goldman Sachs pulling back and channeling, um, Citigroup. All of the banks are fairly weak considering uh, where they started the year. Um, so I'm not extrapolating a lot from that information. Um, last one we want to look at is Whirlpool which still looks like this Gartley pattern. Um, this is a shark pattern, actually, uh, because uh, C dipped below A. You know, I really don't like to put a lot of faith in shark patterns and trade shark patterns. But if it's true, the stock is going to 200, but it's not going to happen without a major change in uh, economy spending and a return of better employment. So where are we? Uh, the message is that we are at the beginning of earnings season. Beware, our S&P 500 now has a definite, very confirmed trend line. We originally spotted this trend line when there were two points, and we watched it come up and confirm and show now that we've had one, two, three, four, five. Every day this week we've come up pretty darn close, and then Friday we definitely hit this trend line and found resistance. Uh, there's a high possibility that the Chiku span falls into this gap next week and gets stuck in here. Um, let's keep an eye when we talk about this on Monday. Let's keep an eye on the Chiku span and talk about that. But we could see the price coming back looking for support on the cloud.